My name is Solomon Ayele Derso. I'm the founding director of Hamari Africa Media and Research Services. I am here at the uh, U.S. Institute of Peace for a research project that Amari Africa is working with USIP on USIP's engagement with the African Union, particularly its peace and security work. One has to do with the progress made around the operationalization of the African Continental Free Trade uh, Area Agreement. Uh, more specifically, as you know, uh, the African Union's theme of the year for 2023 is acceleration of the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area. Other issues uh, of interest have to do with one, the socioeconomic, the dire socioeconomic conditions on the continent. Uh, they received uh, quite a lot of attention uh, because many economies on the continent uh, are um, going through very difficult times, whether it is in terms of cost of living of people, whether it is in terms of date, whether it is in terms of um, inflation or in terms of the performance of the currencies uh, of, of uh, countries on the continent. And finally, uh, peace and security issues also received a great deal of uh, attention during the course of the summit uh, with a particular focus on, for example, what is happening in Eastern DRC, uh, in respect of which there was actually a summit level meeting by the Peace and Security Council of the African Union. I think this is a very important question. Actually, it came up during the very opening session of the summit. They highlighted uh, how uh, these particularly economic conditions are hurting uh, the uh, continent so very terribly. Uh, and in part, actually, uh, Secretary General Guterres uh, associated and linked these conditions with the broader uh, global multilateral uh, system, particularly the multilateral financial institutions. These conditions that African countries are facing is a result also of whether it is from a COVID-19 pandemic perspective or from a perspective of the war uh, in Ukraine. They have created these shocks uh, and, and these shocks are now being felt uh, by the economies of the continent but they are also a product of the way access to development finance is organized and provided. Uh, often, it is very difficult for African countries to have access to development finance. When they do have access, it is on very punishing terms. And what that entails is basically we need to have a reform of the multilateral financial system and institutions in order really to address what may be considered to be uh, some of the fundamental challenge, particularly as these relate to, for example, meeting the sustainable development goals, which are you know, part of what the world committed in terms of creating a more peaceful and a more inclusive societies in the world. And we are very, very far uh, from that. Not just far, but actually we are experiencing regressions in that respect. First, I think the uh, priority that needs to be given uh, in terms of the engagement of the U.S. They need first, in terms of narratives, it's important that as far as the narrative goes, it is said that this is a partnership. All right, if it is a partnership, then it doesn't have to be uh, projected in terms of U.S. Uh, countering China or countering Russia. It has to be U.S. engaging Africa as a partner and therefore on issues of mutual concern and interest. And one other shift very important from the U.S. perspective is the partnership with Africa needs to be looked at away from the tradition, uh, the traditional way of looking at Africa through the humanitarian or the security prism. 
principally uh, not so much through the trade investment and uh, fin development finance uh, dimension uh, and, and, and use of tools perspective. Mm -hmm.